Cuba. We are all gathered here today on a very sad occasion. And it is particularly sad for me. Sorry. May I also request you all to put your formula silent. What can I say? With what words can I describe the emptiness that I feel with Prafulla's passing away? And that too, rather suddenly, because the last time I saw her, which was not really very long ago, about 15 days ago, I, she was in bed, I went there at about 6 o'clock in the evening and she was uh, chatting with me, she was chatting on the phone and uh, we were discussing things, she was joking with me, you know, when I commented that she'd become rather thin, she said, uh, well, you know, one has become thin at a time when one didn't need have become thin, you know, when we were young and wanted to be slim, that would have been different. So she was in a jocular mood, she seemed all right, I sat with her and then at about 7.30 when she would like to see her serious, I left. So when I, a few days later, when I heard that she wasn't well, I was quite unprepared for what I heard. I heard that she had been moved to the hospital and that her, she was on life support. It was, it was such a different situation from what I had seen a few, a few days ago and it, it worried me tremendously and then I found out that she was really quite serious and they were not expecting her to be able to, uh, to come out of it. Later I was told by her daughter that um, she was in great pain and that she had decided that enough. I have lived a full life and everything is enough and I just, I just want to go. And she mirrored herself and the life force just ebbed away. It is so typical of Prafula, you know, when she made up her mind about something, she was able to, able to do it. For me, it is a great loss because Prafulla and I have known each other for many, many years. At first, it was, our meeting was also so typical of what Prafulla stands for. I had joined the JJ School of Art and on the, at the Fine Arts building on the steps, I met Prafulla. And you know, she immediately, very effusively and very enthusiastically started talking to me and for me as a newcomer, it was such a wonderful feeling to be accepted and at that time she was a senior and she was a well-known personality in the college. So to be accepted and taken in hand by a senior person was such a wonderful thing, you see. I had finished my graduation at the Elphinstone College and come there. So while we were more or less of the same age, she was a senior and I was a junior at the School of Art. So she really made my life so pleasant in the School of Art. In the two years I was there, she was constantly mentoring me, constantly helping me, and we became very close friends. And thereafter, I mean, for now almost 60 years, we have been very good friends, and we have been together in numerous, uh, uh, what should I say, expeditions together, numerous uh, projects together, numerous things together. She not only became a friend, my friend, but she became a friend of our families. And that was the quality that Prafulla had. She just did not make friends with one person. She made friends with everyone around her. And somehow she had the ability to draw people towards her. She had that magnetism, you know, her effusiveness, her generosity, her spontaneity, everything brought people towards her. And that way she had an ever-larging, ever-expanding circle of friends. And whenever one wanted anything, she'd say, yes, yes, I know so and so, I'll get this done for you. I'll do that. She was always so forthcoming in these matters. She has been known for her quality of giving, of being very, very
very generous, of being very helpful, of helping people whom she did not even know. I remember times when I was with her at this art gallery and we would be looking at exhibitions and we would meet young artists who had come all the way from distant places. They would be here and they would be wanting, you know, they may not have sold very much, they had lots of expenses. So Prakula would sit there, you know, and call up collectors and say, here is a nice, uh, here is a good artist, very accomplished work. If you would like, please come, see and purchase. You know, her last word was also, purchase the work, purchase the work of this artist and help them. And many an artist she has helped that way. I have seen her do it and I have always admired this quality in her to be able to give so much. And while giving, she was also very, very frank with her opinions, very forthright, you know. She would speak her mind to anyone, regardless who the person may be, whether it was a young artist or it was a person, like you say, a man of stature and uh, fame. She would openly say what she wanted. And the strange thing is, nobody ever minded it. She, I have seen her talking like that with Mr. J.J. Bhava of the National Center of Performing Arts. I've also seen her giving her opinion to Mrs. Sagla Birla, the wife, uh, the wife of Mr. B.K. Birla regarding the collection. So she was free with her opinion, she was free with what she felt and she always conveyed it. But what was strange was that nobody minded it. Actually, they, she endeared herself to them because they felt here is a person who is transparent, who is saying what she feels and who is saying it openly without any, any uh, uh, acts to cry. I mean, there are very few people like that and that quality of hers just was amazing. I mean, we all think twice about voicing our opinion, not Prafulla, and we all liked that. And her ability to give herself in various ways. I, I recall when I was doing, I was at Mark, as editor of Mark, I was doing a volume on Goa. And, you know, I didn't know Goa very well. I didn't know all the art forms there. She said to me, why are you worried? I'll take you there. Together she came with me, we went to Goa, she opened all doors for me, I was able to see many things, I was able to photograph many things, I had entry into old mansions, I, had, uh, I could photograph some of their, uh, you know, heritage uh, properties, I could uh, photograph their artifacts, and I, my volume became very interesting because of that. But were it not for Prafulla, I would not have been able to do it with such ease and uh, comfort as I did. So for a person to be like that, and as I said, I have experienced her generosity in many ways, and she would take me to places, you have to buy good saris, they are available here, there is some good jewelry available here because of our common interests and the many things we did together. These were the sort of things where she would, you know, openly open sources. Many people, you know, are very, very guarded of her resources. They don't give generously. But Prafulla was always very, very generous in whatever she did. I, when I met Prafulla, she was, as I said, she was a senior and she was passing out. She was winning so many awards and she had such a promising career ahead of her. She was really winning awards at the Bombay Art Society, at various other institutions and uh, her portraits were excellent. But over the years, you know, she, her interest shifted. From painting, she went into institution building. She began, began to take a deep interest in the Bombay Art Society, in the Artist Center, and the Art Society of India. She somehow felt that these institutions, in the new sort of way in which the art world was functioning, but perhaps becoming irrelevant. And to her, that was not something that she liked. She wanted to make them relevant. She wanted them to have their glory. She wanted to restore them to their prime position again. And she spent a lot of time, I remember since 88, or even before that, she was the prime mover in Bombay Art Society. She 
urged me to get land from Sharad Pawar for Bombay Art Society. Had it not been for Prafulla, I would have never approached him. And I think it would never have transpired that Bombay Art Society got this wonderful piece of land in, um, in the Bandra Kurla complex right across from the uh, Leelavati Hospital. So it's a very good location and she managed to get it. Then for many years the plot remained empty because they were not able to collect funds to build a building. But she never gave up. She went to various persons. She talked to different people. She went to government agencies. She saw that the plot was not taken away. And then she was able to find someone who funded the building. And that building is today ready. I am so happy that Rafula could see the building ready and in place before she passed away. Now, today, it is up to the artists of Bombay to see that that institution functions, that it functions in the way she had envisaged, and that it functions well and is restored to its former glory. Today, we have gathered here to praise and celebrate the life of a person who gave so generously and so bountifully to everyone, and we hope and she has, in that way, contributed significantly to the art scene. And we hope we will always remember her in that way, and we will keep her memory alive in various ways. Thank you.